Lois, I told you it ain't safe. I'll tell you what's not safe. Going hunting with Dick Cheney. So, you all set to go hunting? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest Family Guy cutaways. I'm gonna pay for us. You'll get it next time, yeah. So you were in prison, right? For this list, we'll be looking at the most shocking and surprisingly bleak cutaways in Family Guy history. We're not saying these are all necessarily worse for going there, just that they definitely caught us off guard. What do you think about these jokes? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Officer Reese's you know, Lois, if everybody was as close-minded as you, the world wouldn't have some of its most inspired creations. It's a question that's been plaguing humanity for years. How did they come up with the idea of combining chocolate and peanut butter? Family Guy has an answer, but it's not a pretty one. It begins dark enough with two inebriated drivers colliding into each other and being violently ejected from their vehicles. Man, this chocolate bar is delicious. Oh yeah, I love peanut butter. One driver is eating chocolate, the other peanut butter. When Officer Reese's comes onto the scene, he eats the combined concoction, discovers its delicious taste, and silences the men permanently before ostensibly taking the idea for himself. I'm Officer Reese's. What happened here? The idea of peanut butter cups coming from an instance of drunk driving and an act of horrific violence is definitely not how we would have imagined it. Number 9 too old to be adopted. Nothing is off the table for Family Guy, even orphans. Well, a lot of people rented your house. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, Chevy Chase, and Dan Aykroyd. For a while, it was an orphanage where the children sang desolate songs. In season 12's He's Black, Cleveland returns to Family Guy after his eponymous show was canceled. He has four seasons worth of DVDs of what we've been up to. You know, just so you back up to speed. And I'll warn you ahead of time, these have jokes in them. His house is a disaster, and Peter explains that it was rented out as an orphanage. The scene then cuts to a group of dirty Victorian-era orphans singing about how they're too old to be adopted. We're too old to ever be adopted. No one wants a nine-year-old. We don't know why an orphanage would be showing Family Guy to nine-year-olds, but just imagine if they saw this. Their hearts would break into a million pieces, as if the cutaway wasn't dark enough. It ends with Peter throwing a shoe at one of the children, just to twist that knife a little bit deeper. Shut up, you bastards! Number 8. Boston Marathon One could argue that Family Guy got darker in the 2010s. Little tip, Stewie. Love dies, and that's okay. This joke, however, had the misfortune of becoming even darker come a tragic real-world event shortly after it aired. Peter mentions winning a marathon, and it cuts to people running through the street. Holy crap, this is awesome! I haven't felt a rush like this since I won that marathon. Subverting our expectations in the most shocking manner possible, Peter drives his car through the marathon and runs down countless people as they scream in fear and pain. This scene is already incredibly dark, but it also came at a horrible time. The Boston Marathon bombings occurred just one month later, prompting Fox to remove the troublesome scene from streaming services. Number 7. Mayor McCheese as JFK Is a line crossed when a joke involves real people? It's a debate that we can certainly have. In this cutaway from standout episode Road to the Multiverse, McDonald's mascot mayor McCheese stands in for President John F. Kennedy during his infamous assassination. McCheese is shot twice, causing chunks of hamburger to splatter. Wow, so I guess Lee Harvey Oswald never shot Kennedy? Nope, he shot Mayor McCheese. Jackie Kennedy then scampers onto the trunk and starts eating the hamburger bits. Family Guy is undoubtedly one of the best adult cartoons out there when it comes to shock humor. But this one even has Brian and Stewie questioning its tact. That joke's not in bad taste, right? Oh, who cares? He's a cheeseburger. Number 6. We're having Sloppy Joes Family Guy goes to some truly surreal places at times. In this bizarre cutaway, Peter is sitting in a tree guarding some eggs when Lois calls him into the house for Sloppy Joes. Peter, it's time for lunch. Sorry, Lois, can't leave the eggs till Quagmire gets back. We're having Sloppy Joes. When he gets there, he discovers a scarecrow Lois and a recorder playing her voice. It's all a ploy to get the eggs. A mongoose steals them while another kills Peter in the kitchen. They proceed to trick Chris as well, kill him, 
and steal the family television. Lois's repeating voice rings out as the camera lingers on the empty house, its inhabitants seemingly all dead. What happened, Sloppy Joes? What happened, Sloppy Joes? It's like something ripped out of a horror movie, and it's certainly not where we thought the cutaway was going. Number 5. Horton Hears a Domestic Disturbance Leave it to Family Guy to take a harmless Dr. Seuss book and turn it into something decidedly not kid-friendly. Now come on, let's forget our problems and get lost in the world of books. Stewie picks up a book called Horton Hears Domestic Violence in the next apartment and doesn't call 911. And the resulting cutaway shows exactly that. You think it's easy working all day? No. You think I, I like it? I don't think it's easy, but yes, I do think you like no, it. No, I, yeah, I like being away from you because I can't stand looking at you. Horton is reading in his apartment when he hears a man and a woman yelling. The fight escalates, the walls thump, and the woman starts shrieking, which indicates the fight has grown physical. Horton simply sits there, claiming that there's two sides to the argument. Needless to say, we wouldn't blame anyone if they found this cutaway more than a little triggering. Sometimes, I don't believe I know you. Number 4. Peter's Rat Farm We honestly don't know how the writers think of some of these jokes. Well, what do you think? You certainly do paint a picture, Peter. This cutaway shows Peter dressed as some type of 19th century plantation owner asking the farmer rats in his basement for rent. The rats don't have it, because obviously Peter's dark basement is not conducive for farming. Peter works out an arrangement with the rats and has the female strip for him. Perhaps we can work out another arrangement. Oh, please, senor, not my beloved. Armando, Armando. It is for the children. It's a dark enough joke, but even more so by the rats crying and Peter's malicious cackles. This show really knows how to milk a joke for all the darkness that it's worth, and it's not afraid to make Peter look really bad. But you know, I got I got to pay for that. That that, that comes out of my oh. paycheck if you if you take it. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Uh, yeah. Well, I can't in all good conscience take that then. Number three, Peter's third shirt. As previously mentioned, you know it's bad when Family Guy breaks the fourth wall and admits it's going too far. That's exactly what happens with this joke involving Michael J. Fox. Peter claims that his white shirt was ruined at a wine tasting hosted by Fox. The show then hilariously cuts to Peter addressing the audience and claiming that actually showing the cutaway would just make us all sad. Hi, I'm Peter Griffin. Now, we were going to show you the actual scene, but it it would just make us all sad. Which, yeah. After making more jokes aimed at Fox's Parkinson's disease, the episode cuts to the gag anyway. Oh wait, now they're telling me they do want to show it. I really like the finish on this Shiraz. And yes, it did indeed make us all sad. Poking fun at someone's disease is a very dark method of comedy, but at least the show has some self-awareness about it, I guess. Number two, aggressive cancer. There are some things that most people don't joke about, and cancer is one of them. Of course, Family Guy isn't most people, and they will essentially joke about whatever they feel like. Chris mentions the first chemo patient who disguised his bald head with a bandana. The show cuts to said man and his partner gleefully admiring his new look and forgetting, for at least a second, the painful reality of their lives. What? Oh my God! Right? It's like you don't, don't even, even have, have cancer. cancer. I know. Oh my God! <laughs> no, but I still have pretty aggressive cancer. This being Family Guy, the cutaway ends on a dark note with the man gloomingly reminding her of his aggressive cancer. Sometimes the show really wants us to feel guilty about laughing at it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. You Have AIDS Family Guy has proven time and time again that it isn't afraid to take shots at off-limit topics. Things like Parkinson's, cancer, and AIDS are very difficult subjects for comedy, and they make for some truly dour cutaways. In this scene, Peter belongs to a barbershop quartet that delivers a horrible bit of news to a hospital patient. I don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Devaney, so I'll let these guys do it. In the traditional barbershop style, they reveal that the man has full-blown AIDS. 
There's a lot of contrasting elements here, from the dour implications and the jaunty tune to our cringe and how catchy the song kinda is. Say what you will, but no one can deny that Family Guy has guts. I'm sorry, I wish it was something less serious. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.